And yep, we're back to talk about another form of symbiosis called commensalism. If you remember, symbiosis is an interaction between two or more organisms of different species. When one organism is helped in that relationship and the other organism isn't helped, but they're not harmed either, they're just kind of not bothered, that's commensalism. Sort of like the relationship you have with your teacher because you know your teacher just lives to teach you stuff, right? And you are totally not bothered by that. There you go. Sort of commensalism. Commensalism means one organism benefits and the other just isn't bothered by it. Let's look at some way better examples, like a tree frog hiding in plants. The tree frog benefits because it's hidden from predators, and the plants don't really even know that they're being used for that. So they're not bothered at all. And then we all benefit from that cute little face. Look at that cute little face. Well, the tree frog benefits from the plants. The plants don't really benefit from the tree frog, but also they're not harmed by the tree frog either. That's why it's commensalism. Or, how about cattle egrets, that's a bird, and cows. Cows stir up lots of insects everywhere they go, and cattle egrets like to eat insects. So they hang out with the cows so they can eat the insects when they get all stirred up. The cow doesn't mind, it doesn't want to eat insects, and the cattle egret benefits. And here's another commensal relationship. Golden jackals will follow around tigers so that they can eat the leftovers when the tiger's done hunting and eating. The tiger doesn't mind. He's done. These are just leftovers. And the golden jackal gets to eat, so it benefits. It's a commensal relationship. Remember, commensalism is a symbiotic relationship where one organism is helped and the other isn't helped, it doesn't benefit, but also it's not harmed either. Like the relationship that monarch butterflies have with milkweed. A lot of animals don't like to eat milkweed. It has toxins in it. So butterflies use that to their advantage. They lay their eggs on milkweed. They like the milkweed and hopefully their eggs won't be bothered by predators. That's pretty clever and a really good example of commensalism. Because commensalism means one organism benefits, like the butterflies, and the other organism isn't really bothered by it. It doesn't benefit, but it's not harmed either. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the commensalism video. But I have a question for you. How many times do you think I said the word commensalism in this video? because I think it's 10, but I feel like it could be more. Oh well, I guess we'll never know. I mean, it's not like someone's gonna go back through the video again and Peace see if out. I'm right, right? Nah, who would do that just to prove me wrong? We'll just go with 10. You'll never know the difference. Wait a minute, you're totally trying to go back to the beginning of the video now, aren't you? So you can prove me wrong. All right, fine. Well, let me know what you get. But I'm pretty sure it's 10. I don't know why y'all have to double check me all the time. Just once, just one time. Somebody could be like, yay, good job, Mrs. Smith. You're right, Mrs. Smith. But no, everybody needs to double check. Need to double check me. Well, la-dee-da. <laughs>